Итак, у нас в гостях господин Алварес. Он был капитаном, теперь он доктор. Он из Пуэрто-Рико, поэтому я у него спрошу несколько интересных вопросов. Прежде всего, what about Puerto Rico? Is it a cool place? Very cool place. Very beautiful place, tropical island, uh, rich in tourism, uh, but they have a big problem now with drugs. With drugs? Yes. I heard uh, previously you've been involved in the drugs yourself. Yes, I used to transport drugs all over the world. All, all over the world, like, uh, have you been in the Soviet Union? Soviet or? Union, Soviet Union, Middle East, uh, the Philippines, South America. So, uh, what, what year it was? When you first time came to Russia? First time I came to Russia was in 1980. And uh, what have you been doing? Well, I used to bring drugs. Uh, I was going out with a ballerina here from the Kir Kirov Ballet. I used to stay over by Nevsky Prospect at the Astoria Hotel and uh, enjoying the good times here in Russia. So I have been selling the drugs here in the Soviet time? Or? Well, I used to bring them. We used to give a lot of drugs away. Even, even in the Soviet time? Even in the Soviet time. It's very dangerous because when I was here, uh, they didn't have pedestroika. Um, you remember, I think, the midnight curfews and the KGB following you all over the place. So um, we had to be very careful when we came over. And one of the things that we wanted to avoid was not to go to the Siberia, you know, the Gulag Archipelago. Yes. So uh, it was exciting times. And, uh, and you know what the awesome thing was? That God was always taking care of us. Even in the underworld things that we were doing, the hand of God was upon us. Well, so, but then uh, you got uh, to the prison, right? Mm -hmm. uh, after that, what, what year it was? Well, in the prison, I was in prison when I was 15. I got arrested in New York, went to uh, a jail called Rikers Island, the Tombs, which is one of the worst prisons in America. And then I was arrested in Brazil uh, also, and in Puerto Rico. And uh, like I said before, God was protecting me because he had a ministry for me. So, and when, uh, when you become a Christian, because I know mm. your life is changed from captain of mm. the ship uh, to the doctor of theology. That's uh, completely different worlds, uh, as soon as I understand. Two different worlds. And, and you know, uh, Igor, God promotes, not man. You know, we never expected these things. I never thought I would be a captain. Uh, when I was living in the underworld, I was actually living in Holland. I had girlfriends in Singapore and Trinidad. I was constantly traveling all over the world. But then I, I decided one day that I wanted to do something excellent in my life. But I was living in darkness, and I thought the darkness was light. So, you know, since I was working on the ships, I said, let me get up to the highest point that I can get. So eventually in 1982, I became a captain, and then I became a pilot, which is above a captain. A pilot is the one that brings the big $200 million cruise ships, and I was working out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. So, and uh, what's happened when, uh, uh, how you found out about God? I well, mean, you because, know. Because, I mean, you know, we were learning in, uh, uh, in Puerto Rico, lots of Catholics, and we were kind of, and the Italian mafia, they all know, you know, <laughs> kind of worship God uh, after they kill killing several people. Uh, so in the mafia world, it's uh, uh, all over the world. They put in the, the you know, candles and everything. But how, uh, I guess your relationship with God wasn't that good at the time, right? It was never good. <laughs> but you know, God was protecting me. And it's funny you say that because in the mafia, it's called business as usual. You know, they kill yeah. people and then they go back to the spaghetti and meatballs and they eat, right. light the candles, no problem, you know, they forget about it. But you know, uh, Igor, even as we live life, you know, it, it's really deep how God has always taken care of us. You see here, in, in, even in Russia, how many mafia members have come to the Lord. Let me give you a little testimony real quickly. I don't want to yeah. take too much time. I just got in touch with some Japanese uh, about a month ago. And my heart was to work with the Yakuza. The Yakuza is the mafia of Japan, very right. honored. And I went to see a pastor, and the pastor asked me to preach at his church. And I said, but I want to preach to the mafia. He says, I have five mafia members in, in Japan and Tokyo that have already accepted Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we see how God is working. As they were in the underworld, God protected them, and now he's launching them into mm. ministry. So let, uh, let, let's share your testimony, you know, how you came to uh, become a Christian. To Jesus? Yeah. And let me tell you what's powerful, right on this 
TV network, TBN. Yeah. 1986, I had just gone through a terrible divorce. I was married to a beautiful Puerto Rican lady. I had three kids at the time. I was traveling all over the world doing drugs, and I was empty. My life was empty. I would look in the mirror, sometimes my head would disappear. So many drugs I used to do, I, I actually didn't see myself. And I got to the point, Igor, that, you know, sometimes you fill yourself with so much of the world. You do mm -hmm. so much, and you're empty. And I think that happens to a lot of business people that are very successful. They travel all over the world, and then they get to the point where they look in the mirror and say, my life is empty. So mm -hmm. I did everything I had to do in life, from going to the carnivals in Brazil to, uh, you know, right. South America, Africa, you know. And then all of a sudden, it got to the point where I was empty. I lost right. my marriage, kids. So I decided to commit suicide in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So you want to kill yourself, I right? wanted to kill myself, and when I went to start to get dressed to kill myself, I turned on the TV, and I tried to get the Cartoon Channel, mm -hmm. because I thought if I start laughing, they see me happy when I kill myself, and they say, he went to hell, but he went happy, mm -hmm. and he's smiling. And uh, I got Nicky Cruz on TV, a fellow countryman. And, you know, it's, it's so precise how God works because God didn't send me to Uzbekistan or Tajikistan or even Ukrainian or, you know, European. He sent me a Puerto Rican to give me a message. So you turn on TV in, and there was uh, Nikki Cruz. Nikki Cruz was there. What channel it was? It was uh, Channel 45, Miami, uh, TBN. TBN channel? TBN in Miami, right, and My Pembroke goodness. Pines, yeah. And I turned on the TV, and, and, and you know what was so particular? That when God wants to speak to you, he's such a good God. What a mercy he yeah. has. Because he didn't have to do that. And, and here, he, Nicky Cruz is speaking my whole life story on TBN. And he points his finger at me. He says, God's going to change your life around. So I thought with all the drugs and alcohol I did, I thought I was losing my mind. I said, That's, I'm going crazy. This cannot be. So I started changing the channels. I had 84 channels, you know, the cable mm -hmm. box. Every channel was Nicky Cruz point his finger so every channel mm -hmm. you turn it on uh, changing the channels and every, every channel, channel uh, the preacher Nikki Cruz talking to you every single channel from the one channel TBN from the one channel TBN it's so amazing let's uh, watch this little show of uh, about life of Puerto Rican guy by the name of Nikki Cruz how he met God Эй, Ник, можно войти? Ты, наверное, шутишь. Я хотел зайти, сказать тебе, что Бог любит тебя. Ты разбудил меня для этого? Можно мне зайти? Слушай, ты психопат. Пошел отсюда, иначе убью. Я верю, ты мне желаешь добра. Я тебя ненавижу. Я убью тебя. Я же не боюсь тебя, Ники. Ты лучше бы. Все слова. Ты внутри такой же, как любой другой из нас. Там страх. Спроси парней отмеченных, Ники, они расскажут. Ты все-таки любишь людей. Люблю делать больно. Очень одиноко, Ник. Ты... Melton, is the story almost uh, similar to you, right? Uh, Nikki Cruz was talking to you, 
And what's happened next? Well, what happened next is I heard a voice. See, I had been in seven different religions. I had been in the Hindus, the Muslims. I used to read the Quran. I was in the Buddhist, mm. always seeking God. I was uh, ministered to as a Malaysian priest, a uh, Hindu priest in the Malaysian uh, jungle. You know, so I was always seeking God. My parents were in witchcraft in Puerto Rico mm. and never finding them. So uh, when I saw Nikki Cruz give me the story, I thought I was going crazy. I said, my mind is, you know, I just lost it, the drugs, the alcohol. So I heard a voice that said, turn the TV off, audibly. I heard an audible voice, and I know the voice. It was satanic. It was a demon speaking, turn off the TV. You don't need to go kill yourself. So I turned off the TV, and uh, wow, God is so good. Went to my room, got my shirt, and as I'm leaving the house, no electricity on the TV. The TV, just as I'm going by my living room, the TV comes back on again. So, when no electricity, no you leave in the house, and all of a sudden, TV is turned again. It turns on again. Wow. And Nikki Cruz is there, and, and this is how God uses people. He points his finger and he says, God is going to change your life around. Hmm. And I looked, and I had, in, in fact, just to, I shortened up my testimony, but I actually had a pole in my living room. And when I was going through the 84 channels, I hid behind the pole. And what actually happened was when I looked over, and he said, God's calling you. And I got so scared because I couldn't believe that God was speaking to me. So I hid behind the pole, and I looked on the other side, and he pointed his finger again. He says, God's calling you. Several and I knew something was happening twice. Wow. And then I went through the passing the 84 channels, turned the TV off, no electricity. And as I'm walking out the house, the TV turns on again, and he points his finger one more time. He says, God's calling you. You know what happened, Igor? At this point, after finding all these religions, always seeking God, I knew that God was calling me. My goodness. I said, it, it was the last chance. It was like I hit a wall, and God said, as far as this, that's where you're going to go. Now, you either make a decision for good, and he gave me Deuteronomy 30, Life or death, blessing or curse. He says, you choose. And my heart was still hard. You got to remember, I was in the mafia cartel. You know, I, I dealt with rough people, assassination attempts all over the world in Colombia and Brazil. I was living at 20 years in the Amazon. My heart was hard. And, um, you know, and all of a sudden, but I knew then that I had to make a decision. I didn't know what it was. And I said to God, I said, God, I don't know you. I don't trust you. But I said, if you're real, that's the way I said it. I said, if you're real. I challenge you right now to show me that you are the God that I've been right. seeking. And this is on the point of suicide, because I didn't believe in hell, and if I would have killed myself, I would have went to hell, never to get out. But you know what happened, Igor? I hear a lot of testimonies about people, they say, oh, well, the, the thunder, the lightning, the house moved, the yeah. hurricane, nothing. It was just a peace. And I remember that it was like, God had touched me. Everything was gone. I used to smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. I drink a bottle of uh, rum every two days, uh, cocaine, pills. Uh, I was just a mess, you know. And all of a sudden, that day, everything just whoosh, so went it's away. So in one day, it's... Uh, oh, right there. Right there. That was it. I, I mean, was set free. Uh, some of the people are trying to get rid of the, you know, hab habit smoking for 20 years, for 20 years and they so. can't do it. And it's everything disappeared in one everything day. Everything in one day. It was, uh, it was a miracle. A it was a miracle. And like I said, I used to smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. My goodness. And what's I'm happened really next? And, uh, and what happened next was that uh, I started to go preach that same day. I went to Fort Lauderdale. Same day? The same day. I just left the house and I went out to the beaches of Fort Lauderdale. And I didn't know what to preach because I never read the Bible. I read any other you know, books, religious books. I knew the Bhagavad Gita, the yeah. Quran. I read the, the Buddhist writings and, you know, the, the book of uh, witchcraft. I knew all that. And, uh, but that day I started telling people what, you know, what Jesus did in my life. Kind of like Saul of Tarsus when he was on yeah. his way to Damascus. And then when he was saved, he went out everywhere he went and he gave his testimony. My goodness. So now you are a doctor of theology, right? Now I'm a doctor of theology. So now you're preaching all over the world. And why are you here in uh, Russia? Not just to be on TBN, which is a great privilege for us, of course. It's and, a privilege uh, and an honor uh, for me. But uh, also, what are you doing here in Russia? Well, now we came, uh, we actually came to do some prison ministry, but it's kind of hard right now to get into the prisons. So we're doing the rehabs, and we did a woman's shelter here. We did a few churches and now